Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Educate. Let us do demo regulation. So uh, remember that um, whenever we're talking about demo regulation, we're talking about the regulation of the temperature. So it's we have got two cases on a hot day and on a cold day. Remember, on a hot day you sweat and on a cold day you don't, right? So now uh, we are given a diagram here uh, that shows the parts of the skin that are involved in thermoregulation. So in thermoregulation, remember that the parts that are involved, uh, when it's hot, remember, the sweat gland is involved. Sweat gland is involved as well as blood vessels. Blood vessels are also involved. Uh, what else? The hypothalamus. The hypo thalamus and uh, maybe some skin receptors but then those are just minor organs so whenever they say parts of the skin this is my interpretation so whenever they say parts of the skin that are involved in thermoregulation i have to think of the sweat gland the blood vessels as well as the hypothalamus so now let us try to make labels on this diagram to see which we which part is a and b so here we can definitely see that um let me just make here we can definitely see that this is the surface of the skin like this is the skin itself like the top of the skin yes so this is the surface of the skin and what can we note from that we can note that here there is a sort of like a hole yeah sort of like a, a hole or a pore that allows something to come out and here we can denote that this is sweat that is to come out here this is sweat that is to come out to the surface of the skin and then this is the tube that is carrying the sweat so it means a has to represent the sweat gland a has to be the sweat gland it is because you can see that uh, it leads it's actually a tube that leads to the surface of the skin and then it releases something to the surface of the skin and then b has to be the blood vessels so the hypothalamus remember it is the commander it is the one that that actually make this whole process possible it is the one that sends out the commands but um the parts that are actually acting is actually these parts so these are the parts of the skin that are involved in thermo regulation so let us now go ahead and answer the questions so the first question they say give two reasons why part a is classified as an exocrine gland so this is actually not a specific question but a general question why do i say that we need to understand first of all what is an exocrine gland so when you say we've got an exocrine gland so it is this gland that releases its secretions into ducts so secretions are released into ducts into ducts as well as uh, the other characteristics of the um, of the exocrine glands they do not secrete hormones they do not secrete hormones so what does this mean when we say that secretions are released into ducts for example if we have got a tube maybe any tube maybe an esophagus or something and there's an organ here there's an organ here so when that organ releases its secretions or whatever it produces is released into a tube or a duct it is called an exocrine gland when its secretions are hormones and they are released into the blood they are called endocrine glands but then when the secretions are released into tubes or into ducts then we can say that they are exocrine so now they want uh, us to tell why is a which is the sweat gland classified as an exocrine gland so remember that the sweat gland first of all for it to be exocrine it has to secrete its secretions into the ducts so here the sweat glands actually secrete sweat it produces the sweat yes the sweat that you see on a hot day it is produced by the sweat gland so it releases that sweat into what into a duct so that is how you answer the question 
So for 2.5.1, we can say that the sweat from the sweat gland, sweat from part A, sweat from A is released into a duct or into a tube, released into a duct. Just like here, you can see that the sweat, the sweat here is actually released here and then it moves up, up, up and then it drips out of the skin something like that so sweat is released from through into a duct and then another one the sweat gland a does not secrete hormone a does not secrete a hormone secrete a hormone so as i said this question is general for every exocrine gland the secretions will be released into a duct and for every exocrine gland, again, they will not produce hormones. For example, sweat is not a hormone. Remember, a hormone is a chemical that is released into a blood, right? So now, sweat is not actually that, but then it's a secretion. It's a type of a fluid that is produced by, by, by the sweat gland, and it is released into a duct, into a tube that drives it out to the skin. So this is actually the skin surface. Let me just label that. So that is how you answer the question. Then now we go to 2.5.2. .2. So on 2.5.2, .2, the question says we should describe the role of the role of the skin receptors in thermoregulation. So remember thermoregulation, we have said we are just controlling the levels um, of temperature. We are regulating the temperature in the body. When it gets hot, yes, it gets hot, really hot, and the sun is hot, but your body is still able to maintain a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. It is because thermoregulation takes place. So now, what do the skin receptors do in thermoregulation? So remember, when we say it's a receptor, it is something that detects a stimulus and um, converts it into an impulse and sends it somewhere else. So that is just a general question as well. So skin receptors will do the same. So skin receptors, they actually do what? They detect a temperature change. So they detect a temperature change when it is hot or cold. So they detect a temperature change. So this temperature change is actually our stimulus. So they detect that temperature change. And then that temperature change or that stimulus, they convert it into an impulse and convert and convert to an impulse to an impulse and that impulse will be sent to the hypothalamus which will be sent to the hypothalamus which will which will go to hypothalamus so that's just it so remember we've said that uh, just from our analysis here, these are the parts involved in thermoregulation. So how, how does thermoregulation actually occur? If I use a different color here, I can just say here, what actually happens is um, the receptors in the skin detect if there is a change in the temperature, right? So if it gets hot or it gets cold, the, the, the skin receptors will detect that and they will turn that message into uh, they will turn that uh, that stimulus into what into an impulse, and that impulse will go all the way to the brain to tell the hypothalamus that it is hot outside. Then the hypothalamus will now will now bring about a change. It will be the one that will tell the sweat gland to release the sweat. Yes, something like that. So the whole point here of the skin receptors is for them to detect a temperature change. So here, this will be your two marks. And then the last question, 2.5.3, don't think I have space here, but then they say, explain why structure B dilates on a hot day. So we have labeled structure B to be blood vessels. So blood vessels, we're talking about um, tubes that transport blood. So they dilate during a hot day. So when you say that something is dilating, it means that it is opening up, it is becoming wider. So something... Let's just say a blood vessel was like this. And then what happens? And then now it's something like this. It becomes wider. There is now more space in it. 
so it increases its diameter so we actually call this process vasodilation vasodilation when the blood vessel uh, when the blood vessels dilate or become wider or open more so when they open more why, why why do they open more actually on a hot day so on a hot day remember that the heat increases in the body and it has to be released right so how is the how how, how are, are the blood vessels playing a role in that so they dilate during a hot day why do they dilate it is to allow to allow more blood more blood with heat to move to the skin surface to move to the skin surface so what is this telling us it tells us that the hypothalamus commands the blood vessels to dilate or to become wider and then when they are now wider there will be more blood entering and when there is more blood like passing through it will go to the skin so this blood has got more heat remember it's a hot day so it allows when it dilates it will allow more blood this is a keyword it must allow more blood and that blood has got heat so that blood has got heat and then it allows it to move to the skin surface and when it moves to the skin surface then the heat will be lost or um, or thermoregulation will take place or the temperature will reduce so that's just the point so i think this serves enough to get six out of six if you have got any suggestion please say in the comments thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe